أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear brothers, sisters and viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, I would like to welcome you tonight in our regular uh, Ramadan live webinar We are now 29th of Ramadan We can see that Ramadan is going away we very soon will say farewell of Ramadan. We have still a few more hours to go. Alhamdulillah. Tonight we have a very special guest, Al Fadilat al Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Chief Sheikh Abdurrahman Jaika. Uh, Sheikh is the Imam of Aysamar. He is a very popular Sheikh in Board of Imam Victoria. Alhamdulillah. Uh, he will be talking tonight about ending Ramadan with positive energy. Uh, Sheikh, will you start now? I am requesting Sheikh, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. O praise you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, the figure who always taught us sallallahu alaihi wasallam to have uh, hope before doing any act of worship while doing it and after doing it to always have that hope in allah and to think the best of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always think the best of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah send his peace and blessings upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and upon everyone who follows his footsteps until the day of resurrection. Amen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi everyone. I'm happy, uh, so happy for Sheikh Afiq to invite me and he's one of the most beloved Sheikhs that uh, you could ever meet, mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, Subhanallah, I wanted to start my talk congratulating everyone for the good, great work they have done in Ramadan. Every Muslim out there, well done, congratulations for doing what you have done. Whether it be reading one ayah of the Quran, whether it be praying taraweeh one night of Ramadan, whether it be just doing the fard, which is just fasting, may Allah accept it from you. And congratulations for giving some of your time and investing it in your hereafter. Subhanallah, <coughs> Many people towards the end of Ramadan feel down and they feel that they have not been able to achieve what others have done. And that's why I want to start uh, thanking everyone for what they have done because many Muslims don't have the time that others have. We see some people, mashallah, on videos online praying all night, uh, mashallah, you know, um, spending all the time they have. Uh, worshipping, and we find other people uh, at work. We find some sisters, may Allah bless them, reward them, cooking, preparing meals, helping, doing things, taking care of the kids in Ramadan, while the husband goes and worships, or does whatever he does. These people also need to be thanked. These acts that they're doing are all acts of worship, inshallah ta'ala, as long as they have good intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made uh, worshipping him easy in Islam. So worshipping Allah, being close to Allah can be done in many different forms. And that's why it's, it's not only in Salah, it's not only in fasting, but also uh, in doing the best you can towards others, in uh, achieving your daily uh, goals in the best way possible. That's why, inshallah to the brothers, who are there uh, working all day while fasting, they might have a greater reward than the people who are fasting but sleeping at home, even in the prank all night. So it's not up to us to choose who is who has won the rewards of Ramadan and who hasn't won, who has lost and who hasn't lost. That's not up to us. We all need to have hope in Allah before, while, and after doing the worship that we've done, that we're doing. That's the only way that uh, we're going to push ourselves towards doing more. 
and we're going to save ourselves from thinking bad about others, which is one of the worst acts of sin that you can do. Sort of one, thinking bad about others. So thank you all, brothers and sisters. And uh, just fasting itself is a great act of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith Qudsi, the hadith that's narrated uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, and he tells us uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. So in this hadith he said, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا اثْتَرَبْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ My slave has never uh, came close to me with something that I love more than what's wajib. So your five prayers a day, fasting Ramadan, doing Hajj, doing this, these things Allah loves more than uh, the nafil. So alhamdulillah, that our religion has given us all these wajibat and fara'il to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. May Allah accept that from his own. And I would also uh, like to ask all the brothers to hold on to all these good acts of worship that they're doing and good habits. There's only two more days left in Ramadan and the time is going, but always the last uh, few days and hours are the most precious ones. As we know, you end your work with the best, uh, you end your work in the best way possible and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it for you, from you uh, according to the best way, inshallah ta'ala. While Ramadan comes to an end, and while we are waiting for Eid, and we're going to start another month, we have to understand that Ramadan was there to teach us a few important lessons in life, and give us power to work throughout the whole year. So Ramadan has taught us that we are able to control ourselves. Ramadan has taught us that, no, especially this year, that no matter what, no matter in what circumstance it is, we are able, bi idhnillahi ta'ala, to achieve anything we want. Ramadan has taught us that we can still hold on to our religion even alone. Ramadan has taught us that family is everything. Ramadan has taught us so many things. What we need to do is take these good teachings that we learned from Ramadan and try to start uh, understanding them and start employing them in life. Once we do that, in the night ta'ala, we'll find that it's harder for shaitan to start attacking us with bad habits again, inshallah ta'ala. And this is one of the beautiful things that we see about uh, fasting in six days of shawwal. So once Ramadan ends, we're still uh, in the, the mode of fasting and doing good deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us six days. That, uh, he gave us extra reward to fast another six days uh, that uh, always remember us, from, uh, remind us about the happy moments that we had in Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. So, my dear brothers, the most important thing for us now is to do the best we can according to our, our circumstances in these last few moments and have hope in Allah and believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept what we did for him, inshallah ta'ala. Have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in every act that you have done. Once you have that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do as good as you can, uh, inshallah ta'ala, Allah will accept you because uh, no matter how much we do, it's nothing. And we do not deserve Jannah just from a, a few acts of worship. So it's the way uh, you do it and your, your intention and the way you see it and the way your heart is, that is what counts for the internet. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you sincere, sees you uh, praying a few rak'at, but in those rak'at, you are totally attached to Allah. You're saying, Ya Allah, I don't have anything to give to you, but I just want you to accept this little bit that I have. Uh, you're not seeing yourself 
above anyone else in Islam. You don't have uh, envy towards other Muslims in Islam. Uh, these kind of understandings that we should have, this is what brings your rewards very high. This is what might make you higher than people who spend their whole day and night uh, worshipping, inshallah ta'ala. So we need to hold on to what we have and make the best of it, bi ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always, always give us more than what we have given. So once you step, one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give you uh, way more than you have done. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Jawad al and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in this month uh, the most. So when you ask Him and you seek uh, help from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to help you, bi ta'ala. And we hope this Ramadan is a Ramadan uh, that starts hope in the life of a lot of people who have lost hope in life. I hope this Ramadan has also been a month uh, where everyone had the chance to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get back to Allah, to start understanding the purpose that they are here for. And we hope it's a month that everyone also, uh, inshallah ta'ala, feels happy. And we hope everyone a happy, beautiful Eid, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, as I was mentioning to some brothers, subhanAllah, one of the most beautiful things about our religion is that after we go through this beautiful uh, month of Ramadan, where it has so many happy times, but also it has a few uh, few moments of uh, hardship, we find after that Allah gives us uh, a few days of Eid that we have to be happy in and we have to enjoy, and it's haram for us to even fast Eid. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that balance, and he also makes it uh, an act of worship to be happy in Eid and to eat in Eid and to uh, make others happy in Eid. So Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, uh, beautiful moments, happy moments are always uh, continuing in Muslims' life in different forms. So in Ramadan, as Rasulullah mentioned, you're happy when you break your fast, you feel happy. Uh, when Eid comes, you feel happy. Uh, when you achieved praying a night prayer, you feel happy, Alhamdulillah Ta'ala. So, these things all uh, bring happy energy towards the Muslim and they push him towards doing more and more inshallah ta'ala in the future. As we know, our life in this life is very short. Our life is very short. Uh, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam all have short lives. Most of the people don't live over 80 years old. But Allah made it and wrote it down he wrote down that the rewards of this ummah are greater than the rewards of other um, uh, other nations. And he made it that if we do one act of good deeds, he gives us ten. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is all a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ten is the minimum, so ten or more. This is all a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that should push us towards doing more and should give us the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah, I want to end with a hadith that should make you all happy. To make you all have hope in Allah. Never lose hope in Allah. Rasulullah was with his companions. And he made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his ummah. You know, he said to, he said to the companions, Would you be happy if our nation was a fourth of Jannah? A fourth of Jannah. They said, Of course, we would be happy. And in 4th of Jannah is a lot of people, mashallah. They said, yes. He said, would you be happy if Allah made you third of Jannah? They said, yes. He said, would you be happy if you were half the people of Jannah? And they said, of course. He said, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us, uh, make Jannah, you know, more than half of Jannah will be full just from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is all a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was uh, a guidance to mankind, a mercy to mankind sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Also, another important thing to understand is that our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should always be a very healthy relationship that never ends. So in life, subhanAllah, you know, even with people, we find some people, we have a relationship with them, 
that uh, continues for a short amount of time, whether it be for work, whether it be for something that we need, something that they need, and then it ends. And some people, a few years, some people, a few months, some people, subhanAllah, you need them for your whole life. You never get sick of them. So it depends on the way you are and the way they are. If they open up to you, if they're good with you, you don't want to leave them. So if you're also good, also good to them, then inshallah, the relationship will continue forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the doors of mercy and rahmah and barakah and forgiveness and, uh, and generosity to us all the time. So we have no excuse. But it's up to us to have that relationship with Allah. It's up to us to always be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's up to us to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as everything and see ourselves as nothing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not count on ourselves in anything, like I said, even in good deeds, even in worship, we don't count on ourselves. We're all uh, attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he leaves us, we're gone. So in order for us to continue having this beautiful relationship with Allah, uh, which is a reason for Allah to always answer our dua, make us happy, give us what give us what we want, in order for that to continue, we must also continue worshipping Allah and doing the good acts that we have done. So in Ramadan, we started many good habits, reading Quran, uh, fasting, uh, helping people, doing good, being with family, uh, praying together. All of these good habits, we should continue with them, even if they're less than what we did in Ramadan. So every Muslim should read something, a little bit of Quran a day, a little bit of Quran a day, whether it be a few pages, whether it be one page, whether it be a few verses, whatever you can. Like I said, uh, your acts, uh, don't leave them, even if your circumstances are hard. Do what's possible for you, and don't focus too much on others. Do what you can do, and say, Ya Allah, this is what I can do. Accept from me, Ya Allah. Allah will accept it from you, inshallah. Uh, so continue reading Quran, even if it's less. Uh, continue praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, after Salat al-Isha, pray with it. Pray with it. With it is one of the most important prayers that many people neglect. Uh, try to fast a few days. Come on. Uh, you know, it's sooner to fast three days a month. If you can fast three days a month, well, like three days a month is beautiful. And you get the rewards of fasting a whole year, inshallah ta'ala, just by three days a month. Uh, try to still help people, feed people, do things like that. Uh, this all keeps you connected with Allah, it keeps you satisfied, it keeps you calm, it also keeps you uh, attached to uh, things that are not uh, from this world. The problem with our life is that we're always attached to uh, subhanAllah to this world too much and that we have lost hope and connection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we have these good acts and habits that continue, we don't find the dunya overwhelming us anymore. We work, we have a good life, we're stable, but we're not overwhelmed from dunya. We're overwhelmed uh, from love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what we need in this life in order of us to uh, continue and to succeed in the short journey that we are here in the dunya for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everything and accept from everyone. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, the brothers asked if we could leave a few minutes of questions. So inshallah ta'ala, um, any questions? Jazakallah uh, khairan, Sheikh, for your beautiful advice to our brothers and sisters. Barakallahu feek. Shukran jajila, Sheikhana. We have a couple of questions. Let me start with them. Uh, Sheikh, can I go one by one? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Could you please give us some tips on how to continue our good deeds after Ramadan as well? So, uh, what many people, the mistake that many people make when they try to continue with this after Ramadan is that they try to, uh, you know, they get excited for one day and they start praying the whole day or reading the whole Quran in one day and then they leave it after that and they never come back to it until next Ramadan. So they, they burden themselves too much. Uh, as 
we know the habit that Rasulullah taught his companions, companions was to take things slowly, slowly. Take things slowly, slowly. Uh, continuing with something small is better than not continuing with something big. So like I said, whether it be uh, reading a few ayat of Quran a day, that's a good habit. Keep, keep it, hold on to it. Even if you're able to read uh, a few juz in that day, but then you're not going to be able to continue with it, continue with a few ayat of uh, Quran. Because these ayat will be a connection between you and Allah. Those ayat are going to be there for you in the hereafter, inshallah. Uh, those ayat are one of the secrets that you have between you and Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you always remember Allah with. So these habits, subhanAllah, keep us connected, like I said. So start small, but continuing in everything that you do, inshallah ta'ala. Also, uh, try to understand yourself, subhanAllah. You know, every one of us are weak in some things and strong in other things. Every one of us. MashaAllah, some brothers, they can fast for years, no problem, MashaAllah, you know, they don't have a problem. Others find it very hard to fast. If you find it very hard to fast, maybe fast uh, a day a month. Uh, you know, three days a month, whatever you can. But maybe you find it easy to pray. You love salah. You find that when you're praying, you find your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, pray a lot, no problem. Some people find that that subhanAllah, you know, reading Quran is, is the most loved, they love it the most, you know, the most beloved act to them is reading Quran. They can sit with the Quran open all day. Like Sayyidina Uthman, he died when he was reading Quran, subhanAllah. So, no problem. You actually, reading Quran is one of the beautiful, most beautiful acts of worship. Put your time into Quran. Invest in what you see yourself good in. SubhanAllah, even in dunya, we do this. Everyone does this in dunya. When you find yourself good in one field, we, we focus on it. Uh, so that's another tip. So the first tip is take it easy and continue with little good habits. The second thing is uh, when you start focusing on something, focus on something that you find yourself comfortable with and you find it easy on yourself, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, that's what you find it. And maybe that will be your, your gate to Jannah. Jannah has, uh, you know, more than one gate. Has eight gates, alhamdulillah. Uh, if, if you're, if, if you, Bab al-Rayyan, you know, fasting door is easy for you, bismillah. If another door is easy for you, bismillah, no problem. Maybe two doors are easy for you. Focus on those two. Not every one of us is like Abu Bakr, and, you know, when, when, when he asked Rasulullah, Jannah has eight gates, yes? One is for fasting, one is for, uh, they offer different things. He said, Ya Rasulullah, would someone enter from them all? He said, he said, yes, and inshallah, you're going to be one of them, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is different. We're not all like Abu Bakr. But no problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, uh, you know, eight doors, and he made it that we can enter from only one. It's okay. No problem. Nothing wrong with that. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, don't leave everything, uh, don't leave, you know, everything because you cannot do it all. Focus on what you can do. Keep good habits, and always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. You know, أَعِنِّي عَلَى دِفِكَ وَشُكِكَ فِسْنِي بَعْدِكَ Rasulullah said to Mu'ad, said to Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, uh, when Mu'ad was young, and he, and he saw Mu'ad having that energy, you know, uh, that young people have. That's why Mu'ad was one of the first ambassadors of Islam, radiallahu anhu. So when he saw Mu'ad, uh, and he saw that energy in him, he wanted to give him advice. So he brings him to him, and he said, Ya Mu'ad, inni you know, I love you, Mu'ad, I love you so much, Mu'ad. And Mu'ad was young, and he's hearing the Rasulullah, the greatest of mankind, saying to him, Saying, I love you, I indeed love you. So he felt you know, that comf comfort. And then Rasulullah said to him, In your book, uh, and in another way, so say, or say after every prayer, Oh Allah, help me uh, in your remembrance, in thanking you, and in worshiping you in the best way possible. So help me, Allah, to remember you. Help me, Allah, to worship you, to have good acts of worship. Ask Allah subhanahu for that connection, and he'll give it to you, inshallah, especially in these days. So we ask Allah in the end of Ramadan to help us continue good habits after Ramadan. Be the next time. Jazakallah <laughs> khair, Another question, brother, asking, Assalamu alaikum wa As a general practicing Muslim in Australia, should I be connected concerned about the whole ummah around the globe or it should be within my family, society and Australia? Uh, so uh, we should always be concerned about every human being out there. Okay, we're concerned and we want the good for everyone. So anyone in the world that, uh, you know, hasn't got what we have of good, we wish the good best for them. 
But being concerned does not mean that I spend my whole entire time on the internet, on my whole entire time when I'm sitting with people, uh, debating and talking about uh, the problems and the you know, politics of other countries, while I have lost myself, lost my family, I have not built any network, any connection with the Muslims in my country, I have not been able to uh, do anything positive in my life, that's what most people do. The problem is that uh, people are not just concerned. The problem is that people waste their time into things that they do not benefit them. So yes, be concerned about uh, the problems around the world, no problem, and what do you do? You make dua for people around the world. You wish the best for them, and if you see a problem in others, Try to understand the reason for that problem so that you do not fall into it, inshallah. But your daily work should be focused on yourself and then your family and then the people around you and then your community. So the closer and closer uh, people are to you, you should focus on them more in your work, in your action. Try to build a uh, community. Try to build a uh, relationship with others. Try to uh, change uh, things to the best all the time. So yes, be concerned, no problem. We all have hearts, we all concern, we all wish, we all care. But don't let things, uh, don't let shaitan use those things to take you away from changing uh, bad habits, from doing good, from building uh, healthy energy around you, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Shukran jazilan for your wonderful and motivational talk. May Allah reward you for your time. And also, Sheikh, uh, we'll meet you very soon, inshallah, physically. Dear brothers and sisters and viewers, we are now in the 29th of Ramadan, one of the world nights in the last 10 part of the Ramadan. This night could be the Laylatul Qadr. This is the last sons, brother and sisters and viewers. Please try your best to engage yourself more last few hours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Leave me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. He is waiting for you that you will ask to him. He is likes your eyes when these eyes will cry for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves your heart when your heart will humble themselves by fear of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time, brothers and sisters, try more and more and more, last few hours. Stay safe, stay connected, stay fine. Barakallah feeks, Jazakumullah khair, Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.